and nose ring here coming down from the nose and nose ring here. Hmm? Okay. Thank you. Um, so, um, one of my god brothers told Gurudev at one of the times that I was showing him the Rupa and Rati paintings that we shouldn't have prominent nose rings because it covers part of the mouth. So Gurudev said, no, unless nose ring is there, one is, cannot be a gopi. And then he told one pastime of the significance of the nose ring, which is uh, Radharani is in Man, and she refuses to talk to him. So Krishna came over, and she's sitting there stringing a garland. And Krishna's standing there waiting for her to look up, thinking that, well, if she just looks at me, then I can strike up a conversation, I can you know, make such a wonderful face, that expression that will just charm her. But she's not looking up. And he's waiting and waiting, and so many minutes are going by. And he's just standing there and getting more and more frustrated. And she's becoming more and more happy that, you know, he's under her control. And she's starting to smile, but she doesn't want him to know that she can't help that a smile is coming. So she covers it by pretending that she's fixing her nose ring as she's making the garland. So all the, all the paraphernalia are all manifestations of her Madhunaki Mahabhav, her love for Krishna. So, um, Gurudev, uh, after the Seva Kunj painting was done, Gurudev told me that there's two alcoves on the two sides at Rupsanath and Gaudiyamat, and he wants manjaris there, Rupa and Rati. And, uh, he said that they are not jivas, but they are her kaya viva rup, manifestations of her body. And they are manifestations of her various moods. Various manjaris and sakis are manifestations of her various combinations of moods. And um, this is a little bit hard to explain because Gurudev wanted two things two things in one picture. That is, he said, she's standing at the doorway of the kunj, and Radharani's inside, alone, in man, in transcendental loving anger, and Krishna's not there, and she's waiting, so that just in case that black snake comes, her order is to keep them out. She doesn't ask Lalita and Vrishaka to do this. She orders only the Manjaris to do it because they'll never take a bribe or be convinced by Krishna in any way like Lalita and Vrishaka might. So uh, she's standing here waiting on guard as a chokidar that if that black person comes, she'll send him away. And then he comes like a cat, very quietly and stealthily, and with his um, chatter around his neck, as one does when he's very humble and apologetic. And before he's allowed to come in, Rupa Manjuri or Rati Manjuri or their assistants will say, before we let you in, first tell us where you came from, because we're ordered not to let any black snakes in here. So, so such a person who can control Krishna like this, nobody can bluff that guru in this world. Nobody can cheat him or hide from him. So um, then Krishna makes up some story, or it's not even made it up, that he said, I was trying to get here, but then I was waylaid by Bhadra and Saibya, and mm -hmm. I was forcibly pulled against my will. So no compromise, she says, no problem, just go right back to where you came from. I'm not allowing you in. So then Krishna would have to fall at her feet and weep and beg. And in one of Ashwarup Goswami's songs, he prays, just like we may pray, when will I be so humble as to fall at the feet of Krishna in sincerity? 
Rupa Goswami is praying, when will Krishna, when will I have that mercy that Krishna falls at my feet and um, begs uh, to, that I will um, uh, help Radharani to get rid of her mind so that Krishna can come and see her. When I, when I was doing the paintings and I asked Gurudev um, that unless nothing's going to go in my heart, but unless something at least goes into my mind, it's not going to come out of my hand. So can you tell me some things to think while I'm painting this? So Gurudev uh, told that prayer. I said, what prayer can I, prayers can I think of? He said that prayer of Srila Rupa Goswami. Another thing to remember is um, Utkalika Balari, one prayer, one uh, set of verses by Srila Rupa Goswami, prayers that when will I be there when Srimati Radhika says, keep that black person out, that Subal Saka, that friend of Subal, he may even come in the form of a woman, disguised as a woman, but you should know that it's him. And I don't even want to see anything black, so you should cover all your black hair with white flowers, because anything black, I'll reject it. So even you gopis, if you want to come in the kunj, cover your hair with white flowers. I don't even want to see a black bee. So, um, so in that way, she's uh, Rupa Goswami is praying, but in her inter, in his internal form as Rupa Goswami, and in his, in his other vastu city, his siddhadeya as Rupa Manjari, He's guarding so that friend of Subal won't even be able to get in as a disguise. Then if he's very sincere, Krishna, and weeps enough, then she'll take him by the hand and first getting permission from Srimati Radhika and then take him in. So here you notice she has a um, chamara, and that's for um, whisking away uh, mosquitoes or flies. And... Um, also, she's standing on guard. And also, if, in the case, that Radha and Krishna are both already inside, then she's standing outside with her chamara and uh, waiting, because she'll know the exact moment when to go inside and render her various services. And Gurudev uh, was explaining how to decorate the kunj and that the, the um, doorway is made of flowers and everything is made of flowers. Now I also asked him, um, and during the course he said, don't make them look American, don't, don't make it without tons of jari on it so that it looks like an actual gopi dress. And I said, uh, where should I make the garlands? And he pointed on different places of his own body. <laughs> and that's why you see the garlands in all those places. Now, I think this is Rati Manjari. I'm not seeing. Thank you. Um, when we were doing Rati Manjari, Gurudev said she's not covered enough, so we covered her, put more cloth on her shoulders. And he said that she should be holding, and you can see she's also standing there as a guard, or waiting for her service, depending if Krishna is outside or inside. And um, holding uh, a plate of unguents for Krishna to serve Srimati Radhika, namely the um, uh, a guru and um, sandalwood. They do everything, they don't buy anything. They do everything by hand. In fact, Gurudev was saying, it's best when you serve your deities if you're making things yourself. Um, so they make their own um, ink for writing messages on lotus leaves and giving it from bringing Krishna's messages to Radha or vice versa. They squeeze their own flowers for making ink, and they uh, make their own um, a guru scent and sandalwood paste, and what else is there? Um, kasturi musk, 
from the deer. And, oh yes, I asked if I should put Chintamani <laughs> dust at their feet because we know Chintamani, Gurudev was explaining Chintamani, Chintamani, anything you chinta, anything you think about, you get that right away. And Chintamani fulfills all desires. So, should, so I said, should I make it grass or should I make it the Chintamani dust? And he said, make it grass because their ankle bells are much more powerful than any Chintamani dust for um, pleasing Krishna, for attracting Krishna, for enchanting Krishna. Not because of the value of the stone, because the chinta their ankle bells are made of chintamani. Not because of the um, value of the stone, mm -hmm. but because of the charm with which they wear it. And then, we don't have, for reasons that it's too confidential, we don't have um, typed up uh, transcriptions of these other two manjuris, but I'll tell you a little bit of what he said. This is um, Vinod manjuri and any other manjuri. That's his exact words. Vinod manjuri and any other manjuri. Which one is Vinod manjuri? So, um, as it's stated in the prayer, oh, I asked him when I was painting Vinod Manjari, again, please give me something to think about so that uh, something can come through my hand. I'm just your paintbrush, but something has to come in there. So, um, let's see. Oh, he, said, I, he gave me a prayer to, um, I said, I don't know Vinod Manjari, and I don't even know the um, your Gurudev in this world. So can you give me some prayer so that I can feel more close to them? So he said, Tambul arpana pada mardana payadama bisara dibi vrindaran yamahiswarim priyataya taso sayanti priya prana presta saki kulada pikila sanko chita bumikai Kali bumi surupa manjari makasta dasika sansreha. That means I offer my, I take shelter at the lotus feet of the manjaris, headed by Sri Rupa Manjari, who is always engaged in offering Srimati Radhika uh, water to drink, uh, water to wash her lotus feet, um, taking her out, tambul, taking her out on her um, meetings with Krishna, engaging in all the services, and they have such, they're so intimate with Srimati Radhika, because she considers them her own body, that um, they go and serve in places where even Lalita and Rishaka and Priyanarm Sakis like them hesitate to go and don't go. Um, then uh, he kept insisting on very, very opulent gopi, um, gopi dresses with lots and lots of jari. Now, you can't see it from this close, from this far, but if you get close, and especially if you see the original painting, uh, you'll see that the end of her uh, braid goes like that, it comes like that, like the hood of a serpent. And the reason is, Gurudev explained on one of my visits to Mathura, when she was three quarters manifest, that what to speak of fainting when he sees Radharani, even when he sees Radharani's maidservants, he becomes so enchanted he's about to faint. So therefore, he becomes bitten by that cobra, by the enchantment of her moving braid. And you see that she's like this, kind of holding her holding her veil, anchal. And Gurudev, one day he was inspired, you know, every walk is a dance, so you can see that everything's like a dance with them. Um, so once when he saw the painting almost finished, he was inspired to say, um, 
she's following Radharani, or taking Radharani rather, to um, Nanda Bhavan to, um, to cook with her, to assist her in cooking for Krishna. So when Mother Yasoda sees her coming, even Mother Yasoda is so enchanted, and she knows that if they're coming, then Radharani is coming, even if Radharani hasn't shown herself yet. And she becomes so enchanted by this manjari that she says, Would you like to marry my son? She says, Not interested. <laughs> this is the intrinsic feature of the um, manjaris. Just as um, the bee will not sit on the manjari or the stamen that comes up from the flower, he'll sit on the flower and play in the flower and drink from the flower because the, um, not because the manjaris don't have any sweet fragrance or honey, but because if he sits on them, they just go back and forth. So this is a characteristic of the manjaris, no, no. Of course, it's also the characteristics of Radharani and the gopis, but totally with the manjaris. So she's saying no. And she's holding fruit, waiting to go in for her services. Now she, you can see it's kind of dark out. It could be evening, because Guru Dave likes to get lots of pastimes in one picture. So, um, huh? Jari is the gold filigree designs, both on the borders and inside, you know, as designs. Like everybody has designs in their saris, and these are made of opulent gold, golden thread. Um, you said that uh, Krishna lo loses... Can you uh, speak loudly? <clears throat> you said that Sri Krishna loses his chatter and uh, things... He Fall. Pract practically faints. Does uh, faint. Does faint. A lot of times he faints and rolls on the ground and weeps. But did you also. ever ask Sri when, when that happens, what to the Manjari, what happens to revive him? or anything With like Radharani, that, that is. Um... Well, we mean when he's already down. Uh, sometimes uh, Radharani may pass by and say something, or his friend may say something, or to revive him. I don't know too much on the Krishna side. There are some literatures, though, by Srila Rupa Goswami, very confidential. Um, now, one last thing about uh, the N2 gopis. And there's a generic name for any other gopi. You can call her any other gopi, or you can. There's a generic name that's used in the Gaudiya Mutt. Uh, generic means it's not a brand name; it's general. <coughs> that uh, they call her Guru Rupi, Guru Rupa Manjari, means the guru in the form of a manjari. And when my god brothers were going to visit him. Uh, they kept begging him to ask for who is that any other manjari? What is, what is her name? Who is she? He said, anybody can think they are his guru. I can think he's my guru. You can think he's your guru. So he left it open for that. Um, so without further ado, I'll skip that part and go to the next. I just asked him... Um, when, uh, when Rupa, uh, Sanatana Goswami was hearing from Lord Chaitanya about the um, uh, avatar for this age, the Kali Yuga avatar, and Lord Chaitanya was describing him, and Sanatana Goswami was getting too many ideas and started asking too many questions, and Lord Chaitanya immediately said, well, let's go on to Shaktavish avatar. So I'll just tell you one last thing about these two end pictures. Again, I said, I have to know at least a little bit how to think so that something can come through the hand. So he said, because they're looking, they're both looking in. He said, they're both looking at each other. Radha and Krishna are now, now it's night. And Radha and Krishna are in the kunja. And they're both looking at each other, like very happy and congratulating each other, that we helped to get Radha and Krishna together, that Krishna was 
previously with Chandravali, engaged in amorous discussions, and uh, one of them went there, one of the two went there and said, Oh Krishna, you have to hurry. Uh, your one small calf is going to be killed in the very next second by um, one big bull demon that just came into Vrindavan. Hurry up now, otherwise it will be too late. And then Krishna immediately jumps up and says, Yes, I'm just now coming. Coming back. I'll be right back. You know how the Indians say, just coming when they're going? So then Krishna's uh, going and the Manjari leads him to Radha's uh, Kunja. Um, so on the way, Krishna can't keep his balance. And he's, because he knows where he's going and he's already feeling so much separation. When you get, sometimes when you get closer to a goal, uh, you can't bear it more than when you could bear it when you're further from the goal. That's a whole class in itself. Uh, if you get the Origin of Rathiyatra book, that theory is there in such a way that I promise that you'll weep if you read that in that book. So everybody, if you can get that book, you'll be happy you did. And you'll also weep. You'll weep in happiness. So Krishna was getting closer to his goal, but he wasn't able to keep his balance. He was like fainting on the way, as Radhika does when she goes to cook for Krishna in the morning. So in order to keep his balance, he put his arms on the shoulder of the air. Sometimes the air is a messenger. A mandri may be a messenger, or an air may be the messenger. When Krishna is late, then Vrinda, who is in charge of everybody, including the air, in Vrindavan, she orders the, her air servant to go and find out where Krishna is and bring him back. So the air may go to where Krishna is with Chandravali and bringing Radharani's fragrance. It will go up the mountains, into the seas, into the valleys, where nobody else can go, and into the deep jungles and find Krishna bringing Radharani's fragrance, and then the air brings Krishna back, and Krishna rests his arm on the shoulder of the air to reach safely. So Raghunath, Shula Raghunath Das Goswami prays, when will I um, witness that scene? So uh, when Gurudev was saying how they could be, one of the pastimes is that they're looking at each other, happy that they were responsible for bringing Krishna back to Radharani's kunja, I said, but I thought that that's the service of Sri Rupa Manjari because that prayer is in Sri Rupa Goswami's works. That when will I be able to give that message and trickily, in a cheating way, get Krishna out of that kunj and to, to where Srimati Radhika is. So I asked him, and as he says, I'm opening the, I give the, the key to open the lock to the treasure. So one thing that he says makes us open to so many other understandings when we read so many different things. So then Gurudev answered, they can all do that service. So all the followers of Sri Rupa Manjari, or all the followers of Srila Rupa Goswami, they have the same kind of services, though she's the leader. And uh, then, when I finished the Seva Kunj painting, I just remembered one other thing, two other things. He said, oh, thank you. Um, what can I give you for this? I have nothing to give you. Just like Lord Chaitanya told um, King Prataparudra when he was singing Gopi Geet, I have nothing to give you, I'll give you myself. And he embraced him. He said, thank you, thank you. And then he said, he, like he was pretending to catch himself, and he said, oh, when one is near and dear, there's no thank yous. So if Gurudev doesn't thank you, don't mind it. If you're doing service and he doesn't thank you. Mind it if he says thank you. Say, wait a minute. Are you trying to separate me from you? Then one last thing is that during the course of the painting, he told me that when you finish this painting, you're going to have so many realizations. So um, then... I was coming to the end of the painting, and then it was the, I did my last stroke, and then I 
phew, it's done. And then I kind of thought, well, where am I now? Hey, I'm in the same place as I was when I started the painting. Hey, no fair. And I went to Gurudev and complained. And then, um, then I was remembering as I was going to complain that I was indiscriminately, I know this is a very good group. This is a Swajatiya group, like-minded group. And so I don't feel that I'm going to get any sinful reaction for this. But what was happening when I was doing the paintings was that anybody, no matter whether they were vijatiya, you know, unlike-minded, against party, anybody, as Gurudev was saying things, I was just, as just as I did with Prabhupada. As soon as Prabhupada said something, I repeated it, and that's how I still remember it today. So I thought, well, it's just the same thing with Gurudev. And so... Then when I said to Gurudev, well, you said I was going to get so many realizations that I'm the same person, then all the flashbacks came back. And then I said, oh, is it because I told this to the wrong people, all the secrets that you told me? He said, yes, I put all the treasures in your treasure chest, and then you opened up the treasure chest top and everything flew out. So that taught me to be a little careful. But I, looking around, you all look like Swajatiya people. So now, um, Gornatai, uh, Gurudev ordered me uh, some months later um, that every year he holds a Janmastami Eve procession through the town of Matra, and many of you have been there, where tens of thousands of uh, Residents of Mathura line the streets on both sides like a parade, and Gurudev's party decorates all the streets, especially near the mud, but it travels far. And then people have these spray guns of scented, misty water that gets sprayed as the procession goes, and Gurudev rides on this big horse and chariot, and uh, there are other uh, chariots for the deities, Radha and Krishna, Gornitai, and there are different kirtan parties, ladies, men, Indian, Western, uh, the stick dancing, all kinds of musicians, elephants, <laughs> decorated elephants, the night before Janmastami every year. So um, he wanted them to ride on one of the uh, carts. So he wanted me to paint them. So he also posed for them. He stood up, this was in Mathura, he stood up from his bed and so graceful and grave and like in a swoon and made his feet do what they're doing. And um, so I was showing him first, as always I was showing him the drawings first and then he would comment on the drawings and gradually the drawings would become color sketches. I would show him the color sketch to make sure the color scheme is right and then it would go on to canvas. So, uh, the drawing... Hmm? Sorry to interrupt your presentation, but just for production purposes, later on to make this go very smoothly, could we have a couple of devotees lift each painting to the side where you're sitting? You want to do it now? If, if you okay, want to, yeah. Because I'm thinking switch. ahead. Switch. Okay. Otherwise it becomes impossible to produce the video properly. So when I was showing him the sketches, it was only Gornitai, nobody else was there. And one big tree in between them. And then what you see as the top, that was the top of the tree. But the whole thing was Gornitai, that one little um, calf, and a very, very big tree. And that was the whole picture. And Gurudev was just giving various comments, nothing about the tree. And then we did the color sketch, the tree was there. Then this big, huge, four-foot painting, the tree is there. Gurudev's commenting on the way Gornitai should look. Then in the middle of the painting, like a month later, he said, instead of having that tree there, you should put lakhs of kir hundreds and thousands of kirtaniyas there. And I'd already spent so much time. So if it ever happens to you, it's 
Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a rope, it's a snake. <laughs> so then, I had to do everything I could to preach to myself that I have no independent existence, I'm his, and he can change his mind with me as much as he wants. So then we made all these people coming up the hill, and he said particularly who he wanted as prominent, that is the Panchatattva, of course, Adwaita, Acharya, Srivas Thakur, Gadadhar, Pandit in the middle. He also said what colors everybody's wearing. And um, Vakreshara Pandit at the end with his leg coming out. Well, Lord Chaitanya said that uh, I have only one wing, Vakreshara Pandit, who's the dancer of the Kirtans. If I had another wing like him, I could fly. Then um, I asked him if I should put um, uh, ankle bells on him because in some of the songs by our acharyas, Srila Bhakti Thakur and others, it's described that he's wearing ankle bells. And Gurudev said, no ankle bells. But I said, but it says right here in the song. He said, ankle bells means his bobs, the jewels of his bobs. And he quoted um, Ujjwala, what is that song? Ujjwala Varana, Gora Varadeha. That his bobs are his um, jewelry and his uh, sandalwood, uh, what is it? Those uh, sandalwood bracelets. Those are all his bobs. He doesn't really wear jewelry. What about Nityananda Prabhu? And Nityananda Prabhu also, in this case. I know it's described sometimes, but he said none of them, neither of them in this picture should have jewelry. Just their bobs. And he said it's okay to put a garland, but he said Lord Chaitanya doesn't know if he's having a garland on or off, if his clothing is on or off, if he's in too much. And he doesn't even keep a garland on for any extended period of time because he's rolling and fainting. But for worship purposes, then like this. And then, because he's always talking about um, Radha Krishna worship and Manjuri Bhav, at that time, uh, so many things he was saying just in normal conversations and individual conversations. So I was feeling a little bad about doing it stupidly, feeling bad about doing a Gornatai painting because Nityananda is Baladev and Baladev can't enter into the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So I said, um, and sometimes he says, don't worship Gornatai, worship Radha and Krishna with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anyway, so I was having all these doubts and I wanted to paint it with full enthusiasm. So I said, how can I see this Gornatai in such a way that it, um, in a Rasik way, that will um, inspire Raganuga Bhakti or Braj Bhakti? So he said, you can think of um, Lord Nityananda is Baladev, but Baladev is also an Anga Manjari. And he's also a Kanda Guru Tattva. That means all the gurus in our line, including Raghunath Das Goswami and Rupa Goswami and Viswanath Chakrabari Thakur, they're all within him. They're all manifestations of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. And Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna, or Krishna with the mood of Radharani. And then now, every year, well, he was going on um, procession. And then uh, we sent him to uh, Costa Rica so that they could take good photos of him. But now that we can make the G place, we can have them in Mathura also at the same time. Oh, then one day I asked him, um, is uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Saraswati Thakur, they everybody in our line, they all have at least two forms. One form in Chaitanya's Leela, another form, one form when it looks like it's just them without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like when, like when Gurudev sits on the Vyasasana, that's a form. Then there's a form in Chaitanya Leela, then there's a form in Radha Krishna Leela as a maidservant of Radharani. 
So I said, uh, can I also paint um, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur here? Can I also think that any of the um, millions of Kirtaniyas is Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and uh, Srila Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada? He said, yes. And um, um, my god brother Giri Raj Swami was there at the time in the room. He said, yes, and he's there. And I'm there. He wanted to really say, he's just saying so many names, but he was trying to indirectly say that, yeah, I'm also there on the party. Which, where did you paint? Hmm? Where are they in the painting? In the party? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. I'd have to go back in time and think. Who's good on here? In the middle here. And then found it's on the Is on the end. And she was stuck next to a Uh-huh. And I asked Guru Dave if I can make, just to show that he gets into every detail. Uh, I had symbols, cartels in his hands, and he said no. No cartels. Chamarani's a tree. I heard that the way to try actually has no beard. He was actually very young. I heard that. Young? He was younger and actually didn't have a beard. In reality, because he's older than all of them. Well, Prabhupada told me when I was painting the Panchatattva that he, I should make him about 75 years old. I heard that, I heard from um, this devotee that he said that Alita, <coughs> the Prabhupada God brother came to the temple to instruct them. You speak Mayapur, louder. That Prabhupada God brother came to Mayapur and had instructed them how to worship the deity. And he told a story that when Lord Chaitanya came to chastise and punish Advaita Charya, that he pulled his beard off. Is that correct? <laughs> and I wish should <laughs> that the beard disappeared. I don't know. That, you, maybe you could ask Guru Dave and then tell us all. Okay. So, I was going to say, I was told that Advaita Charya actually didn't have a beard. Guru Dave commented on that? Not to my knowledge, but all during the course of the painting he was helping in the development and he never said not to take the beard off. So if he does say it, then I will, or if somebody... Have you ever been told or read anything about that? No. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is saying that with the Shikshastaka book, I was from the Bali Mechanic. He was at the garage at the Mechanic. The Mechanic of your Libre. And the, the worker, the mechanic, saw the book. Who are they? Yes. Well, who are who are them? But he thought they were female. I told him that they were an incarnation of, of Godhead. But they're ladies, they're naked, the mechanic said. <laughs> How come you tell me that, that it could be God? So I tried to preach to him, and I was dressed like a devotee. And he became a bit of... And so he, said, he became offended, and he said, you're crazy, it can't, this cannot be. Por ese libro, la, la portada, la, o sea, esa ofensa, por yo escuchar esa ofensa, yo me involucro en eso. His point is, his question is that by him hearing about, because he is on the cover of a book, and hearing and listening to the mechanic of this person being offensive, and him being there, is he involved in this offense? That's his question. If he hears an offense about the picture, and he's trying to preach, of the glory of the picture, and somebody, because somebody is saying they're just ladies. Uh, at that time is he, he was, involved in the offense? No, uh, he's he trying to. He couldn't glorify. go anywhere else because he was waiting for the, the gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs>
It's fine. It's no problem. <laughs> now, um, then after these paintings, Gurudev ordered me in Malaysia, stop painting for the rest of your life. They will destroy you because of the fumes. So then uh, I stopped painting. And then about three years later, he said to me, uh, I'm going to be coming out with Gita Govinda in Hindi. And I want you to make line drawings. Um, line drawings of each chapter based on some Bengali drawings that were previously done. The Bengali drawings were very, <coughs> from a material point of view, you could hardly see what, what the picture was. It was so badly drawn. And they really were without any clothes. And it was just very unpalatable and unclear what was happening. But Gurudev told me to use those pictures uh, as, as the basic platform. So uh, then he was going to one country and I was going to another country. And then I didn't see him for a month. So during that month I was looking at the... Um, oh, and then I, I had one English translation of Gita Govinda. I said, oh, I have something that could help me with the drawings. He said, no, don't use them. They won't help you. But I thought, well, let me use them a little bit. And then I looked at the um, Bengali drawings, and I thought, I can't make hide nor hair of what it's trying to say. But, but by reading these verses, I can tell what I should do drawings of. So I made these very nice drawings of what I considered to be the chapters. And then we met again after one month in Los Angeles. And Gurudev hated everything I did. See, I didn't listen to him. And then he totally rejected all the drawings. He said, I wanted those other ones. I wanted you to use those as the platform. And I said, but, but, but. He said, okay, then make it better, but use them. So then I started, I hadn't drawn in so many, I mean, I would draw very quickly, or very not nice-looking drawings for the paintings, just so that Gurudev could see what they were, or previously so that Prabhupada could see what they were, but they could never be considered as a finished picture. But now he's asking for line drawings. So we kept trying to show him the drawings, and he just, like, every time I was around, he would walk in the other direction. <laughs> and every time I would show him s some attempt, he um, looked like it was just totally displeasing to him. And I was getting more and more frustrated, and I kept trying, and then finally I did a little ink, and he didn't like that. Then I tried harder, I did another one, and then he said, yes, now you're getting it. So he, he's like the um, stirrer, stirrer of the butter that's becoming ghee. And the, he's the controller, and the butter doesn't know what's happening to it. It just knows that it's boiling, burning, and all these impurities are coming up. <laughs> but the stirrer knows what's happening. So gradually then, because most of these paintings were done... Um, traveling from country to country, uh, usually with Gurudev and sometimes without him. So the drawings were done. First we were in L.A. and then Badger and then another country and then back to India. So in each place, what, what are we showing now? Well, not quite on the, we're not on the paintings yet. I'm very sorry that I don't have bigger versions of this. If you come to Houston and you see a presentation, we'll have very big, uh, what do you call it, uh, on the, when you project it? Yeah. So uh, <coughs> gradually they were coming. And when we showed Gurudev the half-finished line drawing of this, and it was totally different in the Bengali one. Uh, Krishna looked about six years old, and and she looked about 50, and there was no forest, but it was just like a, uh, the front of a house, but only the front with steps. But then if you looked through the door, it was just uh, empty space, no house. It was really bad drawings. So he gave us direction to put in secluded 
secluded forest. And uh, I asked what's going on here. And he said, this was in a darshan in Holland, a lawn darshan. And he said, Krishna is, knew that Radharani was going to go to get water in the Jamuna, in her pots. So he just happened to be there. And he's longingly looking at her and saying, Oh, I see that you have two very heavy pots. Can I help you with one of them? And she says, No, thank you. I'm a chaste housewife and you're just a debauchee. I'm not interested in your help at all. <laughs> like flirtatiously playing hard to get. And uh, this is another one where the Saki is um, Krishna is lamenting, feeling Radharani's separation, and the Saki is uh, trying to console him and to make him feel Radharani's presence or that they're soon going to meet. And this one is very interesting. This is the end of the book, when they finally meet. And uh, again, we got it from the Bengali one, but it was very difficult to see what they were doing. So uh, when we showed this to Gurudev and it was somewhat clear, I said to him, I think that this picture is not exactly in your mood because uh, Radharani looks like she's the subordinate one and Krishna looks like he's in a superior, higher position. So Gurudev said, this was in um, England in Birmingham. No, no, no. It's not like that at all. Um, Radharani is resting on Krishna's leg and saying, so, are you ever going to offend me again? <laughs> and Krishna says, no, I'm not. I promise. And she's saying, really? Really? <laughs> so even though he's higher, he's still in the subordinate position. Gurudev was acting that out. <laughs> And this is a Saki um, consoling Srimati Radhika and her, her separation. And another interesting thing about the making of this is he said that I should get a batch of artists together, just like Prabhupada said in 1966 and 67, and everybody should help in the making of the pictures. So in each country we met new artists who were totally inexperienced and hadn't done anything like this. And yet, Gurudev empowered them to play different parts in making the drawings and some of the ink parts. And some devotees ended up modeling. And just there's so many devotees that actually took part in the making of this. And this, um, Gurudev also commented on in Holland, in that lawn darshan. I said, can this be Radharani? Because I didn't want to paint, if I'm going to do a drawing of just one person, it should be Radharani. And Gurudev kept insisting, no, this is a Saki. And she's telling Krishna, because Gita Govinda, as some of you know, is just, just conversations between Radha and her Saki, uh, Krishna and her Saki, or uh, Radha and Krishna, or Radha speaking to Ra Krishna speaking to Radha, who's not really there, but he's just lost in separation and getting visions of her. So here, the Saki is telling Krishna that it seems like you're trying to kill Radharani. She's suffering so much in separation from you that she's just about to die unless you do something right away. And she's actually chastising Krishna and abusing him in various ways. And here, Radharani's feeling separation and so deep in separation that, as you know, uh, in the spiritual world there's separation and meeting and meeting and separation. So here there's meeting and separation. Krishna is coming to Radharani as a sporty, as a vision. But not just as a vision. When he comes, she's really there. He's really there. And later on in Kurukshetra, he told her, 
you thought that you were just imagining that I was there, that I was just a vision. But actually I was going there and being with you. And here, this is towards the end, um, Radharani is pretending that she doesn't want to go and meet with Krishna and her sake is uh, pulling her along, insisting that he'll die if she doesn't go in the next minute. And this is another, another one of um, Saki trying to console Radharani in her separation. And Radharani's lamenting in separation. And Gurudev uh, told me that all of these pastimes in the pictures take place at Radhakund and during the day. This one was the drawing for this painting over here of Radha alone at Radhakund. And Gurudev told me that she's thinking because in Bengali there were um, some caption under each picture. So Gurudev was explaining the caption that Radharani is thinking that Krishna came to me so lovingly with his sweet lotus petal eyes that were weeping in separation and pleading me and begging me to forgive him, um, be merciful to him, but I sent him away, I rejected him. So now, what is the use of my life, what is the use of my youth and my beauty and my opulent ornaments with him not looking at them, they have no value. If I in my life, it's better if I'm dead. And here, um, as you see, it turned into this picture. Um, Krishna is uh, something similar to the Seva Kunj painting, where Krishna is begging Radharani for his mercy. And when this uh, painting was almost completed, not the drawing, but the painting, um, Gurudev uh, held it up like this, at Kartik last year, not, not this past one, the previous year, and he said everyone should help with any talents that they have in assisting the uh, art production. Um, and then this is another one that Gurudev said, it looks like they're happily strolling through the forest, but actually Gurudev said, in the middle of everything, she says, I shouldn't be here. This is unchaste and you're a debauchee, so I shouldn't be there. And Krishna is trying to pull her back. She's always making things difficult, not making things easy for Krishna. Because that gives him millions of times more pleasure when he has to work harder. And here again, he's trying to... Um, it was when we showed him this picture that Gurudev was finally showed some satisfaction. He said they should all be like this. Before I showed him this, oh no, I was still showing him this, but it wasn't in as complete a stage. Radharani looked a little older, Krishna was a little, not these proportions, and Gurudev just said, I don't have time to look at this. He had time for everybody else. But whenever I showed him, I'm just going, I have to give class now, right here in Badger, in uh, near Guna Prabhu's house. Just to um, stir that. To see, are you going to say, okay, then forget it? I'm not drawing for you because I'm not getting the, the attention or appreciation. Okay. So, um, yes? You should probably. As um, Krishna is very tricky, and Srila Gurudev is very tricky, and Srila Mani Devi is very tricky. In Varshana two years ago, I was, saw these pictures and so excited. I said, oh, let me put them on the internet, the black and white. Can everybody hear him? Yes. So, so the person can call it. And she said, oh, it's a good idea. And she said, oh, you should go ask Gurudev. And she knows Gurudev's heart, so she knew what his answer would be. She sent me anyway. So in Varshana, if you've been there, there's a tent. And a narrow passage way in. And I've been trying to stop to the Gurudev to ask him. And again, he was avoiding me. So I, I stood there, and then I in front of him, so he couldn't get through the path. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so Gurudev, Shamarani sent me to ask a question. And he said, oh, she has so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> and so I said, well, please, please. And he said, okay. And I said, then I posed my question, can we put these on the internet? 
and he says, oh, you know everything. You know, you decide. And I, and I was like, shocked. And I said, oh, Sheila Gurdjieff, I don't know anything. Please, please, answer. And he said, no. It, it was so sweet. He said, no, this is only for our Sangha. These are so intimate that it is only for us. This is such a gift. Yeah, these, thank you. These also came out of his heart. And, uh, yeah, it's a special gift for entering his heart, actually. Okay, uh, then, um, then after these were done and they went in his Hindi Gita Govinda, he said, do you think they sh that these should be paintings or would they look better as paintings? And, I, of course, I just said, it's up to you. And he said, if you can make paintings, then make paintings of them. So then we began. Um, he said, give the drawings to other devotees and they can start the paintings and then you can touch them up. So these are the ones that we, and some you start also. So then we started the Gita Govinda paintings. And I guess we'll talk about this one first. This is the one that he held up at Kartik time. It's close enough, right? And he's also responsible for all the details of this painting. When it was almost finished, Gurudev said, she looks like a paka brijbasi, means brijbasi. And he said, her hands there is a perfect thing that uh, a lady in Man would do, scratching the, the ground with her nails when she's angry. And uh, even this dimple here, he said the elbow is not complete. You should put some more variety in the elbow. And so even this dimple here in her elbow came from Gurudev. And the pastimes, as I said, are similar. And you can see a whole chapter on this pastime um, in the Gita Govinda. That's in various literatures. That um, sometimes, when Krishna's coming close, Radharani knows that she's there because the whole forest is turning sapphire, sapphire effulgent. So when Radharani's there, uh, everything's turning gold, and Vrindavan is green because it's a combination of their blue and yellow. And when I was painting the Seva Kunj painting, he said I should put a little bit reflection of his skin color on her face and a, li a little bit of her skin color, golden, on his uh, face. So if you look closely at the painting of Seva Kunj, you'll see that. Can I ask, mm -hmm. in material nature, we have the golden sun, we have the blue dark blue sky. In the material nature we have golden sun, dark blue sky. Um, and then green <coughs> earth. And green earth. Does it have anything to do with... Does it have anything to do with Radha and Krishna and their pastimes? Yeah. Gurudev said, the more you know about Sri Sri Radha Krishna's pastimes, the more you'll know that everything, everything in this material world is nothing but a perverted reflection of their pastimes. He said the um, just as the sky um, gives a very soothing feeling if you're in a you know, dark place, nowhere, and then you come into the sunshine and the sky, why does everybody feel so happy? Because um, the sun, when I was in his room, he said, look at that picture. The picture had a reflection of the sun bouncing from the wall outside of Prabhupada's window, <laughs> bouncing from the sun in the sky, and then he said the radius, or the, the radius is, uh, or diameter, I forget whether it's the radius or the diameter of the universe, is four and a half billion miles. Then ten times that thick is um, a layer of earth. Ten times that thick is fire. Then ten times that air. Ten times that water, ether. All ten times mind, intelligence, false ego. Beyond that is the Brahma Jyoti. Beyond that is Vaikuntha and then Goloka Vrindavan. So that sun that is reflecting in this universe is just a reflection of the Brahma Jyoti, which is beyond all those layers, 
which is just a reflection of Krishna's body. So just imagine how happy everybody is there, how soothing they feel when they see Krishna and Radha. So in that way it's coming from them. Um, then, uh, oh, I forgot, there's a whole series of paintings that came before, before the Gita Govinda. So I'll go back. In 1994, uh, or beginning of 95, is when the, uh, the Seva Kunj and the Manjaris and Gornatai were completed. Then, um, in 1996, in, from 92 to 95, uh, I was living in the Iskon Temple and sneaking off to see Gurudev. And then they made that ultimatum in 95, and Gurudev tricked me. You have to switch? Okay, well, this part doesn't have to go in the movie anyway. Um, they made an ultimatum, that is, you either be with uh, Narayan Maharaj and get kicked out of Iskon and you go to hell and Prabhupada rejects you and we're not allowed letting you in our temples, uh, or you don't look at his books, don't uh, read his, don't re- look at his picture, don't look at his, don't be in the same country as him, so many things, and then you get in our good graces. So I told Gurudev, um, I choose you. So he said, no, you won't be able to do good bhajan if you're with me because I won't be able to have a place for you to stay, I won't be able to give you proper prasadam because I was living in the Iskan temple up to then. Um, so it's better if you go back there and just remember this, don't get involved with management, money, or position. So then, after a year of that, I realized that he was just, no, I didn't realize it, until I got back to be with him in Europe, then I realized he was just cheating me and I fell for it. Like Krishna told the gopis, go back to your husband, that's the chastest thing for a wife. And he agreed that he had cheated me. <laughs> he agreed that he had, I said, I said, now I understand it, because Krishna told the gopis, you should serve your husband, uh, even if they're lame and blind and mean. And Gurudev said, yes, and even if they're toothless and poor. So he agreed that I failed the test. Um, 